Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an absolute value problem. I guess I could also call this a locus problem because we're looking for the set of Z values that satisfy this equation, that satisfies this equation. In other words, a family of solutions. And in some cases, maybe in most cases, those set of points in the coordinate plane, in the argon plane, will determine the shape of something known, like they will be on a circle, they will be on an ellipse, or hyperbola, I don't know, something like that, that comes from solving the locus problem. So, in this case, what kind of shape do we have? Do we have a circle? Do we have a square? A triangle? Rhombus? I'm just making it up. Any geometric shape you can think of. Just try to guess because that's fun. And write down your guess. At the end, we're going to check. Okay? Ready? Set? Go. All right. To solve these problems, we're going to look at the following. Since we want locus, we're basically looking for a set of points. I want to use x plus y. Sorry, a plus bi. We're going to use this for now. If that's the case, what's the absolute value of z? Notice we have to take the absolute value of the absolute value of z plus i. Get it? So the absolute value of z is just going to be square root of x squared plus y squared. Right? Good. Let's plug it in. Now I have uh oh notability going crazy. Come on, calm down. So this will be the square root of x squared plus y squared plus i equals. And we want that absolute value to be 1. If we didn't set this, obviously, it could be any number. And that would also give us a family of solutions, but probably a family of curves, particularly. If you set it equal to like a constant c, under certain conditions, maybe you won't even have a set. And you can kind of talk about something like, okay, for which c values we have this many solutions or something like that. Make sense? All right. Anyways, in this case, we're not worried about c. We're worried about 1. How do I? Wait a minute. Is this correct? Yeah, that looks fine. Okay. I'm like, oh, is this true? So the next thing we're going to do is find the absolute value of this number. This is like an a plus bi, right? So it's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. That's it. Easy, right? That's one. Okay, cool. I don't know where this is getting, right? It's weird. This, this number already looks weird, but it just think of it as some number plus i. How would you... How would you find the absolute value of a plus i, right? It would be the square root of a squared plus 1, right? Okay, that's what we did. Now, to get an equation in x and y, let's square both sides. Uh -oh. And then we're going to get rid of the radical. And then subtract 1 from both sides, apply the sauce. Abra, cadabra, hocus pocus. Math and magic. Yay. We get this. Wait a minute. Isn't this like a... Oops, I know. I just realized. Don't worry. I know some people are going to be like, you made a mistake. Okay, that's fine. I corrected it. So I'm not going to cut it. So you'll see the mistake. Anyways, so isn't this a circle? Yeah. With radius zero. Awesome. <laughs> we have heard circle, but its radius is zero. What is that supposed to mean? Well, if you x and y are real numbers and you know that they are, this implies x equals zero and y equals zero, right? If you had complex numbers, of course, this wouldn't work. But this is an identity that we use a lot. It's probably be this way, more like this, right? A lot of algebra problems can be solved this way. But wait a minute. What do you mean by this? It means, let's take a look at the graph, shall we? Okay. If you look at the graph of this, on the coordinate system, I believe I included it. Come on, you can do that. Z equals 0. Yay. Z equals 0 satisfies this, and guess what? Z equals 0 is the only complex number that satisfies it. Because if you plug it in 0, it will work, but if you plug in anything else, it's not going to work. You're not going to try everything else, right? Obviously. I mean, you can if you want, but that will take forever. You don't have that much time. But here, you notice 
we are at 0, 0.0 to emphasize the zeroness of zero, right? But let's take a look at another graph because this is my favorite. You know why? Not because it's from Desmos, but it looks really cool. Ready, set, go. Ta-da, here's the graph. Okay, there you go. Point zero, one point, that's the only solution. Zero is an interesting complex number because it's just a dot, but it's very powerful. Don't underestimate the power of zero. If you do, multiply it by a million, you'll see what happens. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Keep watching videos, including the ones that are on, that are on cyber math. And bye-bye.